That's what she said. All right. <laughs> hey, guys. How's it going? Another review today. Hair. Yeah, she could. They they cut their hair today. So we, uh, I just got it from Khan, Saluki Khan. I want to say shout out to two cosplayers who I work with, uh, Gregory Carson, if you're watching. Hello. Uh, also, Meg. I'm glad I got to work with you guys Saturday, get get the photo shoot going here with Kiddo, and you guys know Kiddo, so say hey. And so we want to just say, we watched a movie, I watched it last night, late at night, in the dark, to try to get a creepy vibe about it, because it's called Ghost Stories. And it was made in 2017, starring some, you know, this is a British horror film, first of all. And let's not get into spoilers right away, okay? No spoilers. And it, it also, uh, the Until reason last. I chose this movie is because it was, uh, one of the, supposed to be one of the top 200 rated movies in that year on, uh, Rotten Tomatoes. So I was like, this is supposed to be a good movie. Let's watch this movie. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course we know Rotten Tomatoes has some good choice. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> you got thirty three splats. <laughs> I wish I, I just want to. I wish I had the spat, splat sound effect available. You know, <laughs> thirty three splats. <laughs> All right. So this was made in two thousand seventeen. It is British horror film, and I, I, I'll open with this. Okay, guys. Love Japanese horror all my life. Love uh, American horror all my life. British horror is like, eh, if you if you go from like if you go back to the Hammer films and they really took advantage of color and you know it was really good starting out they did Frankenstein's like the British horror that was probably the peak. But this film is tied to another film that was done in Britain that was really good called the A Lady in Black, and I recommend. I know it yeah, you guys need to watch that film. I learn new things whenever we do these reviews. You'll be like, right. yeah, all these things. And you'll be like, I knew that. Yeah. And I actually like, would like to think of me as a, um, a, what do you call it? A, uh, film professor, if you would like, because I've wasted my life watching films on my life. And, uh, and here's the thing about being single versus pe you married people. You get to watch things that married people don't get to watch. Which is great because, uh, it just depends on your mood. Because like, if you're married, you gotta like sit there and go, uh, I wanna watch this film. Your wife's like, yeah, I don't wanna watch this film. Let's go watch Love Story. And you're like, okay, we'll watch Love Story. And of course you're gonna watch Love Story because you wanna get some. And so it's like, you watch Love Story, blah, blah, blah. But with being single, I just like would get like seven movies. And it could be anything from Love Story to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre to Leather Goddess of the Phobos. Anything like that. You can get like seven of them. Go and order pizza. Just have you a fun night if you're single. So, you know, in that I learned about, you know, cinema. And so in this film, this is made in 2017. We have some actors that we're familiar with. Like with the one guy, I can't think of his name. Martin, is it Martin Freeman? Yeah, Martin Freeman. He starred in a lot of uh, Jackie Chan films, a couple of Jackie Chan films, and uh, you know, uh, those nature. And I really like him. He's 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 in a lot of British comedies too, as well. And he's probably one of the most popular British actors at this time. And this was in 2017, and when this was made, British, uh, and Ghost Story. And uh, the revolves around the what the brain the what the the brain sees what the brain wants to see. Wants to see. Yeah, the that's, brain sees what the brain wants to see. Yeah. Exactly, that's pretty much the tagline to this and what this movie is basically about. And like I said, we're not going to give away spoilers yet. There's a lot of spoilers in this, so we'll start from the beginning. Is uh, we have. A gentleman who is a guy who like debunks psychics and, you know, probably fake televangelists and that kind of thing. And, uh, and so they use a psychic at the beginning of the show, like one of those paranormal shows where you have, you know, the guy says, I see you have a brother and all this. And he reveals this. And of course, if you study this, 
you know, debunking of these psychics. Yeah, this is what they used to do. They used to sign little cards. Hey, tell us a little bit about you. And then you read the cards and then the wife would read the cards off to an earpiece in the uh, psychic's ear so that he know what the people, uh, you know, who the people are, what about them, so he can look like he's got some paranormal powers or supernatural powers, I should say. And there's a lot of them that have been debunked, and there's some of them that they're still, how in the world do they know this? And they Because they're a little bit trickier than others so that's how it starts out with and uh what's your what was your feeling in that opening scene what are we doing here i mean does it feel like this could actually happen in real life or uh, uh what do you mean like the whole debunking show thing or like the whole how it was the the psychic was a hoax part? well i mean to me it was dated like i've yeah. seen this yeah, it was for sure. I'm also not familiar with uh, British films in general. Right. So a lot of the themes and, like, ways, ways of speech were lost on me to an extent. But yeah. I enjoyed it nonetheless. It was a good concept, and it was a realistic view and a realistic, like... Well, I, it, it, it was real enough for me. Exactly, and that's... I understood that... And it was, and but like I said, with me, I was like, oh my gosh, I've seen this before, and that's fine, you know, at the beginning. And like I said, and I guess what I it does... Thought, I also thought he was kind of an asshole. And that was the whole idea, was to project him as a jerk. Because yeah. in some ways, he's a non-believer, but they wanted him to look like one of those non-believers who's a jerk. Because there are non-believers that are pretty cool. You know, like I got friends that are non-believers and whatever. Yeah, and then there's other people that'll be like, this is why you're wrong. Yeah, and yeah. exactly. And there's no understanding of either people's side. It's like with you and me, you know, and whatever we work with. And I understand we're going to have differences, but let's respect each other at the same time. And so they want to portray this guy as somebody. And, and that was the whole another key to it is he's told you were wrong. I was so wrong for not respecting other people's you know, basically their belief and that kind of thing. Did you get that feeling too is when he meets the older debunker that the guy felt like he was guilty for being such a jerk? I felt like he felt he was guilty for being such a jerk because it seemed at the time like he had found something he couldn't explain, which then made him feel guilty about all of the other, you know, for being so confident and rash beforehand so yeah definitely i could see that connection right and and then to me that opening and again i think it's to the reason why it's so like a television show i guess opening is is it so people can say that it feels like reality like we're staying in reality because it it has a 80s it was an odd way to yeah. put it in the movie that way yeah like, if, cause, if that makes sense. It was an odd. Right. It, cause he, it's like, cause it goes to this time frame. Like, for instance, this guy was in the seventies, you know, doing debunking and now he's, uh, in, I guess, supposedly the 21st century doing the debunking. Yeah, right. So that was a little odd, but like I said, I don't know what goes on over in England. <laughs> so for all I know, that could be like all the rage nowadays, you know, I, I can't really speak. Well, I, well, I mean, here's <laughs> the thing with this. The thing that amazed me about, you know, the sci-fi channel, for instance, sci-fi channel was about, you know, sci-fi movies, but they had that psychic like that guy in this movie was. And and I'm like, what in the world does a sci-fi channel have a psychic? Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, you know, it's like the paranormal or something. But some people think, uh, I guess, the paranormal studies are science now. I think it's a part of science. I think you can I take... I can see that in a way, but right. I feel like debunking psychics is not science. True, true. true. But then, <laughs> that, I mean, and that's the whole thing is... I mean, everybody's view of science just really can't coexist. That's that's the truth, and maybe there needs to be a movie about that. It's like I just, yeah, yeah I watched Altered States, and really, be honest, if you watch Altered States, it's kind of like that because Altered States is 
the science of altered consciousness. And here I'm watching this, which is about, you know, the paranormal science. So uh, it, they're kind of connected through all this. And I, I guess that's the reason why I was really prepared for this. So, okay, so obviously the first is to establish this, uh, our protagonist's character. He's a jerk. He uh, debunks science and not science. He debunks paranormal and psychologists and that kind of thing. So we establish that character and they do it really well. Okay. I believe that he can be real. I think that's the purpose and it does, I, it pulls that off. Good for them. So we jump from there. Uh, he says he has a hero, like we we're talking about, they establish this older debunker and uh-huh. I came out. Like one show and yeah. wrote books about it and yeah, someone who he'd been like looking up to him since, you know, he's done it, I, I guess. Yeah, and, and back in the, my day, we had a guy named, uh, the amazing Randy. And he would do the same thing. He would debunk, you know, all these, uh, you know, uh, whatever you want to have. There's a younger guy he used to debunk. He actually debunked a guy who thought he could move a pencil and all this kind of thing. And So there was debunkers in the 80s when I was growing up, I think, about Amazing Randy. And I think that this character is based on Amazing Randy and those guys. And he, cause he's looking at, and I'm sure those shows were exciting to watch in those days. It's like, oh, here we got this guy who can move a pencil and we're going to debunk it. And they do debunk it. They prove, they show that how this is done. You know, it's like pulling the curtain behind, uh, pulling the curtain and seeing the wizard in the uh, Wizard of Oz. There you go. Wouldn't that therefore put the magician out of business though? It would. In real life, is that like what happened back then? Yeah. And, but so you gotta understand some of these, these people were not calling themselves musicians. One guy called him, he was a former prisoner and called himself a yoga master. So he had cult followers. A and, yoga master? Yeah. And so when, and his followers were his, uh, was in his cult. And the thing is, when they debunked it, it's actually helping people because these people were waking up realizing that they're following a shyster. Right. And so that's another thing, too, is they put it in perspective that this guy felt like he was doing good because of his past. Yeah. Right, because he had a bad past with... I got that as well. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, like, again, though, this was a sneaky way to do a horror anthology of three different stories. And I think the stories that you get for the first and the ending are to an excuse to tell these three different stories, like they did with uh, the movie that you just watched not too long ago. The t- scary stories to tell in the dark, yeah. I got a, I got a, the same similar vibe, too. Yeah. And like I said, and I, and I asked you if this would be a future and this would become popular, and I think it's getting to the point where it is. So we've established, we go meet this older guy, and so what really ends up happening here? This older... So we meet this guy, and, uh, the guy's, you know, really excited to meet him and, like, the entire lead-up to going to meet him, he's, like, introducing himself to himself in his head, you know, like... That was funny, movie. and that's what amazed yeah. me about this film, is how many, how much funny he, stuff they put in. He was, also, <laughs> he was also a character you could relate to at the same time, because if right. I was going to meet someone who I, like, uh, just, let's say, some some cosplayer who's done, like, all the things that I like, I'd be like, wow, okay, my, my name is Lucas, nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. This is my name. You know, like just trying to like work yourself out so it's not stupid. But this character was so relatable and real, and I liked it a lot. It was cool. But anyway, he goes to meet the guy that's his like idol, and uh, he's like, "Oh, hi. This is this is me. It's an honor to meet you." And the guy's like, "Eh, You're okay." And then he's like, "Here's a copy of my book." And the guy's like, "No thanks." Kind of thing. It was it was pretty funny, but. Then, um, the guy, <coughs> sorry, I keep saying the guy, I'm so descriptive. His, uh, idol was like, um, your whole life you've been, you've been doing this debunking and so have I, and I've come across these three cases that I can't figure out, essentially. That's kind of what he was saying, right? Right. And then he was like, I want you, 
I need you to prove me wrong. I need you to prove me wrong. Go investigate these and prove me wrong. So basically he just sends this guy out on a mission with his little file of these three cases. And uh, that's that's the beginning of our story. That's yeah, our, well, and it's yeah. like, investigate these three cases. Prove me wrong. He throws the files at him and you're like, okay, so we've got an introduction. So we're... F- We've introduced our character. Now we're going to introduce what's going on. And our first story, golly, what is our first story? Because <laughs> my mind just slipped. Uh, it's the, it is. It's uh, the one in the pub. Yeah, it's the pub, and he meets the night watchman. That's right. He's a night watchman and very Scottish, very Scottish uh, guy, and he calls him Sunbeam. Cause Sunbeam. Of, I like that though. I like no one, I've never heard that, but that's yeah. Cool and 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 the thing is with this film, the way they uh, direct the first time he calls him Sunbeam is kind of like calling him a prissy, or you know. But it the tone changes at the end, and we'll get into that because at first we're thinking he's really insulting the guy, and and it, he seems like such a hostile character. Yeah, the guy who we meet at this pub. Yeah. Seems like he's very distraught and upset about things and very uh, uh, aggressive. Mm-hmm. Right, and he's got that Scottish thing. And, of course, like, the thing I describe about Scottish people, the only people can, like, say a negative and positive in the same sentence. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally get that. Because <laughs> they'll, they'll be... The, 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 that, that, like, sincere <laughs> but insulting you. Exactly. <laughs> And, and, and but they're they're unpredictable. Let's put it this way: it's like you know, like Irish people, you know, where where and the German people, they, you know, you got this little angry. You expect them to be angry. Scottish people, you just don't know where it where they're going with what they're saying. It's like you know, it's like oh, and you got it. Oh, it's like and you, go, uh, you know, press it going. Hey, you really have to work and get off get off the door right, and get back to Mars. It's like. Are you mad at me? Oh no, you know I love you, my buddy. Come on here, we'll get a little bit, get out, bear, go to get the hell out the pub. And you're like, what the heck did he just say? <laughs> <laughs> right, it's like, do you, do you do you need me to call someone? <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyways, so it establishes this night watchman where we get the story. So he tells the story. To, you know, our protagonist, I can't even remember his name. What was his name then? The guy's name, their character's name. <laughs> I have to think about Hello? That. What? I, I cut out what you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, what was the guy's name, the, our protagonist's name? Oh, he's Goodman. Uh, Philip Goodman? Philip Goodman, there you go. Yeah. Dr. Goodman, too, right? Wasn't he? He, had, he was a professor. He was a professor. Yeah, I know you're skipping out a little bit. Could be your computer, but that's okay. All right. Hopefully, we get it fixed. But yeah. Okay. So, um, all right. So the Watchman tells a story, and what does the Watchman tell our uh, professor here? So, uh, this one was kind of confusing, but I know he's basically he's watching these buildings at like four a.m. Uh. Just as security. Um, and if I remember correctly, it just shows him going through the corridors and the hallways, and the lights continue to completely unplug. And he has to go back with his flashlight and find the lights and, and plug them back in again, and then it'll do the same thing, and he has to go plug it in again. And then at one point, when he went to go plug them in again, it looked like the wires were completely destroyed, kind of thing. And, uh, they end up luring him with mannequins. Cause he thinks he's, he thinks he's chasing some kid that's like pulling the lights and, you know, being a big jokester or something. And, uh, he ends up getting led into one of these somehow unlocked cells that he's guarding that was definitely locked before. But it was wide open this time. And he goes in there. And, uh, tries to, you know, find this kid he's messing with and he gets locked in. And 
Is that a good way to describe our first story? I feel like I missed a lot. Well, here's the thing is, I'll say this, this is the worst night watchman job I would ever have because I don't know what he's guarding. He's guarding like some crappy old building that's dilapidated. I guess they're renovating it or whatever, you know, someone's figured they would try to save the old crappy building. And it's run by generator, which means that this is really crappy. I mean, he's sitting out there and he's got a radio. He don't have a television set or nothing. And he's by the one himself. Thing that made me mad is he wouldn't take the radio with him whenever he'd go somewhere. He'd be like, <laughs> "All right, I'll see ya." Puts down radio, <laughs> goes with crappy flashlight. Like, bro, like. Yeah, it was a really crappy flashlight. Not even a mag light. I mean, it's like it was different details throughout the movie were like just crafted so dreamlike. Yeah, and I mean, for instance, like a tape recorder. Who in the heck? sends a tape in the mail in 2017. <laughs> and it didn't even come in the mail. It slid under his door, right? Yeah, it was slid under door. It's yeah, like... It come to him yeah. to be like, meet me at my house. And, and the thing is, it's amazing how easy he was able to find another tape recorder to play the tape. <laughs> it was just laying on his, on his table, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I mean, things like that were questionable. And like I so said, the Night Watchman scene is another one where it's like, this is a crappy Night Watchman job. And, of course, the thing is, too, if you listen to the radio conversation, you can tell he's the experienced Night Watchman. Right, right. Yeah, and why? guy who's yeah. like some rookie who's just now started the job. Yeah. So. And then, of course, like, I don't think he had a gun, which made it even worse. Yeah, that's, I noticed that, but I was wondering if that was a, just a country difference. Yeah, I thought so too, but I, I think still those, some of those guys would hid, you can have certain weapons, like you can hide them in the desk or something at least. Or uh, like a nightstick? Yeah, or a night, something, cause it's like he's a night watchman, was he gonna scare people off with his face? Flashlight. <laughs> I've got my flashlight here, I'll <laughs> take your flashlight and I'll put it sure on my horse. Yeah, so you find him with the sunbeam. Right, exactly. So, and of course, this has this has reminiscence of Ghost Girls from you know from Japanese horror films that I watch, which is what we do face in this situation. And then we get the creepy little spider hand kind of deal going up on his body, and it really ends like that. But because of this supernatural experience. Uh, it's changed his life. He's no longer a guy cheating on his wife. He's all of a sudden this guy who's trying to be an upright citizen now because he's had this experience with this girl. And so, cause we have this interaction between Goodman and the priest and, you know, trying to explain, you know, this is something supernatural, just, you know, accept it, whatever. And there's really not much investigating going on cause he doesn't like go to the, place where he saw the ghost or investigate or anything like that? He, he very quickly concludes that this guy has a psychological issue and basically explains it to himself that this guy's seeing things. That's right. why he moved on to the next one. Yeah. It, it, like, that is guy's crazy next story. Yeah, and exactly. And it builds up to guilt. You know, a person is guilty, so they start seeing things, you know, their conscience, or which is conscience, you know, is bothering them or whatever. And so you start seeing some things. It's like, you know, weird stuff going on. So that con- really technically concludes our first story. And the thing is, I've got to admire with them is uh, that... They did not really push like a big old jump scare. It was just that creepy build up deal. And, you know, I didn't really get the creepy vibe. It was okay, but I know what they were trying to do. I don't know. Were you kind of creeped out when it did the build up then that first story? In the first story, uh, I mean, maybe a little bit. Yeah. I just, like said, I wasn't creeped out at all, you know. I just kind of, and I'm watching this at three in the morning and, and it's like dark and stuff, and it should at least gave me some goosebumps or something. Right. I had Alex over, and we like turned off all the lights, and you know we're trying to like. I'm talking about you. We were trying to, you know, hoping it'd be like a scary story too, but it was it was just it was more of a mind like 
it makes your mind work mind more. Trip. Yeah, it was more of a mind trip, even though it it, it did have its like spooky elements. Which yeah. cool. You want to come say hi? Yes. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and oh, I'm gonna like. Sorry. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna stop right here and I'm gonna check the uh uh where we're at as Who's your daddy? <laughs>